Members of the House have to seriously question the, the motivation behind this amendment. We cannot allow this kind of flippant amendment to the Constitution for something that's just so important as the vote of no confidence. Is there no members in government who are fit and capable to be Prime Minister? Wambla Mansur, the fit for Prime Minister? Huh? Why? No, the party leader stop, huh? Let's look at the track record from 2019 to 2024. You've got to talk about facts. Facts don't have feelings. You've got the numbers. So why are we trying to weaponize legislation to stay in power? You've got the numbers. You've got to prove yourselves on effective policy implementation so that there's increased and augmented confidence in the Prime Minister and this government. And you haven't done that. The Honourable Deputy Opposition Leader. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Just to add to the debate, uh, the good Attorney General, um, Deputy Speaker, has put forth an amendment for Section 145 of the Constitution, which, in my view, uh, members of the House have to seriously question the, the motivation behind this amendment. What is the impetus of amending Section 145 to prevent the voice of the people of Papua New Guinea to be heard in the House. This is a democracy, Mr. Deputy Speaker. We have to promote disagreement, debate, discourse, deliberation. We have to disagree. We cannot allow this kind of flippant amendment to the Constitution for something that's just so important as the vote of no confidence. The good Attorney General tried to qualify the reasons for making this amendment, talking about political stability, talking about a lack of confidence, talking about the socio-economic situation in the country. My good question to all honorable members of the House, did a, is a vote of no confidence causing the law and order crisis up in Enga right now, for example? Is a vote of no confidence causing that? Has a vote of no confidence prevented any foreign direct investment in the last five years? Has a vote of no con confidence caused that? No, it hasn't. It's a total lack of performance by the good Prime Minister and the Cabinet, this government. You just do not have any solutions for the oh. suffering that's taking oh, place yeah. in the country right now. And now you're coming here to say that, all right, we're going to be given more time, and you're weaponizing legislation to just keep yourselves in power. You have to, the good Prime Minister, you have to humbly reject this bill, take it back. You have to earn the confidence of the House, all members of the House, because I represent the people of Chaba and they're part of Papua New Guinea too. And the same applies to all members in the opposition. Is there no members in government who are fit and capable to be Prime Minister? Wambla Mansur, the fit for Prime Minister? Huh? Why? No, the party leader stop, huh? Let's look at the track record from 2019 to 2024. You've got to talk about facts. Facts don't have feelings. You've got the numbers. So why are we trying to weaponize legislation to stay in power? You've got the numbers. You've got to prove yourselves on effective policy implementation so that there's increased and augmented confidence in the Prime Minister and this government. And you haven't done that. Cost of living crisis, FX crisis, fuel crisis, law and order crisis. My goodness, it's endless. And you have no solution. And no shame coming in here now to weaponize legislation to just stay in power. Shame on you. Shame on you. It's a total shame. This is supposed to be an honorable house. Honorable, uh, the, the use of word weaponized legislation is evil. You're weaponizing. 
Section, Section 111 of the Constitution allows for bills to be promulgated, processed, and passed through. Democratic process allows this debate and it's got every right to debate. And at the end of the debate, the process will decide whether the law stands the test of scrutiny or otherwise. But he cannot use saying that we're weaponizing law. We're following the due process for the laws to be, from, uh, to be brought before Parliament. Cannot abuse this Parliament with fancy words like that. Although, Prime Minister, your point of order is in order. I think the, uh, the member is expressing himself from what he felt to debate, and I'll allow him to continue on with your debate. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I take note and I, I withdraw the term weaponized. But this amendment to such an important part of the Constitution, Section 145, is oppressive, and it will prevent the voice of your fellow Papua New Guineans from being heard. We represent people in this House, and so do you. And we are allowed to disagree on policy and the way this government is performing. And if we disagree, this is our pressure valve, Section 145. And you can defeat it, and you can defeat it. And we can amicably come in the collegiate spirit and defeat it on the floor. There doesn't have to be confrontation, there doesn't need to be camps, there, don't, there doesn't need to be any hostility. We just come in here and talk about policy. And we will judge you only on your performance. And as far as we're concerned, your performance is lackluster. As far as we're concerned. And you can't sit there and then try to say that, no, we're, we're, we're doing great. So, Honourable Deputy Speaker, on behalf of the people of Chuave, this is a sad day for the country and the Constitution, and I will not vote for this amendment. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And we also expect the Prime Minister to uh, stop worrying about his political survival. Uh, he's got to just downsize the, the cabinet. It's, it's 33, it's obese, it's just 38. It, 38. It's, uh, it's just obese, it's too big. He's got to take it down to 23. He's got to get rid of all these vice ministers. And we've got to get to work uh, for the people of Papua New Guinea. We've got to stop worrying about political survival and allow the constitution to reign supreme and allow uh, parliament to be respected.